How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video and in this video I am going to show you how to utilize the stereo field with the super useful object MC Mixdown. If you are unfamiliar MC Mixdown you can use it to take all your audio signals whether that's two or a hundred and mix them down into a left and right stereo field. And right away, if you do this, it's going to make all your audio stuff that you're doing in Max MSP just sound so much better. So let's just jump right into how to do this. First things first, if you don't know what MC is, MC is a audio set of object. I believe it stands for multi-channel, but if not, it definitely lets you work with multi-channels because what you do is you take an object like something like MC cycle, and you would define the number of channels and say something like 12 and that with this object internally is going to give you 12 different sine waves that you can set to any frequency and helps give you polyphony in a much simpler way and then once you have all your 12 cycles set to whatever frequency you want you would patch them into the mc mix down object and you would define how many channels you want as your output if you're doing a left and right stereo field you're just going to put a two in there and this would be patched into here and this would then be patched into an mc easy dac which is the audio output you'll get the speaker icon when you create it and that would be passionate like this and then that was basically would be how you would get some sound if you actually sent frequency values to the mc cycle object and it's really that simple it just takes whatever grouping of mc objects you have with however many channels there are and mixes them down into that left and right field but it doesn't have to just be with other MC objects here. You could have something like a bunch of audio samples going on. I don't even know. There's the classic jongly. There's the classic, uh, is that you? Um, you could even have other audio stuff like maybe like a cycle wave or like a rec wave. It really doesn't matter. These are just random audio objects and you could have all this stuff doing cool things and maybe, you know, being processed in some way. This one's got like reverb on it. This one maybe has some delay on it. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing in your patch. And then you want to take all these different weird audio things that you're doing and you want to, again, put them on that stereo field left and right and make sure you can pan them appropriately. It's actually super easy to still do that even though these aren't MC objects. All you got to do is create an MC pack object and you got to say in your pack object how many audio signals you want to then pack down together in this example we have four so we're going to say four and it's going to create four inlets for our audio signal so we would just patch that in to each of those inlets just like this and then with this we're going to then patch this into the mc mix down and two and now all four of these audio signals are being mixed down into a left and right channel. And again, we would just patch that into our MC Easy DAC, which is the audio output. And as soon as I do this, we should hear the cycle and rect wave playing immediately. Okay, that's annoying and beautiful all at the same time. And it's really that easy. We are just doing exactly what I said. We're taking four different audio signals and we are mixing it down to a left and right channel and putting it on the stereo field. And already it sounds so much better than say something like a double mono signal, which is maybe what I would have shown in a past tutorial video because I was being quick about it. But we're way past that now. We're in stereo field land. And if you wanted to, you can get more specific with this. Right now, it's just kind of like default spreading all our audio signals out across that left and right channel. But you can be specific and you can say, I want this sound, you know, all the way to the left, this one on the right, this one in the middle. It really doesn't matter. Uh, you just got to take a close look at how that's done. And it's done through this right inlet, which is the multi-channel pan position. You see it says zero through one. So basically all you got to do is send this an audio signal value between zero and one to pan the sound. And if it's a zero, it'll be all the way to the left. It's a one, it'll be all the way to the right. Anything in between will be somewhere in between as well. And it's really easy to do this as well. And because we have four 
audio channels and it requires an audio signal, we can use this object called MC SIG. You may have heard me talk about the regular SIG audio object. All it does is it takes a number value and converts it to an audio signal. So super useful in this case. And again, we have four audio signals. So we're going to say four channels in this MC SIG, which internally in this object creates four different channels for each one of these sounds. And we're going to patch that into that rightmost inlet. And now we just have to specify, I'm going to turn this all the way down. <laughs> now we just have to specify which, which value we want and for what object. And it's also really easy to do this. There are a few different ways you could do it. Uh, and one of the nice and easy ways to just make sure everything is happening and in some sort of sequential order is using the object MC target and MC voice allocate. And these two objects work together. Um, you just patch them into each other like this. And then in the MC voice allocator, you have to define how many voices there are. Um, despite the fact that this is a different argument message, it's voices, not channels, it is the same value. So this will match how many audio signals we have. And again, in this instance, it's four. So four voices for our four audio channels. And then whatever we send into here, this combo pair together will make sure that it then has the right message format to go into this object and talk to a specific channel. So you would do something like a float number value, it doesn't really matter what it is, and it would come through and it would say, send this value to channel one, and then this value to channel two, this value to channel three, this value to channel four, and just repeat through those in order, just like that. And so if we just patch this into the MC SIG, it would right away start to work but uh, we want random values between zero and one uh, since that is the range for our panning position. So real quick, before we start doing anything, we're gonna create a random object. I'm just gonna say 50. We're gonna scale from zero to 49 because that is 50 random values. We're gonna scale to zero and one and we're gonna output that random range into the scale which will go into this float number box. And now this just needs a bang. Um, so uh, to keep it simple, let's just do a metro and we'll say metro 100, patch that in, create a toggle. I press T on my keyboard to do that. I'm patching the toggle into the metro and then we're going to lock the patch down here or you can command click anywhere in the blank space and this will now let us interact with the patch. So I can click, turn this toggle on and we are getting a message out here which is saying, and you can see it here, set value 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4 3, 2, 1, 4, 3, 2, 1 whatever that random value is, which is setting these random values here in the MC SIG, which is now randomly panning our sounds. And we can hear that more clearly once I turn the audio back up, which I'm about to do. And that's really it. It's so easy to do that. All you're, all we're doing is we're, you know, taking our audio signals, we're packing them together, we're sending that into the mix down, and it knows how to handle all of those right away. And then we are just setting a audio signal value in the right inlet to be the pan position. And it's really cool that we can just, you know, create a random thing and use this MC voice allocator and MC target combination to send this message to the MC SIG in sequential order. And you can even expand upon this so much more so that, you know, maybe each time one of these loops uh, in its sound, it jumps to a different pan position. Um, really, whatever kind of idea you have, this is the basic setup to start doing that kind of more advanced stuff. So hopefully you found this video very helpful and you see the use in MC mix down and how you can use it to utilize the stereo field. If you did learn something, please remember to like and subscribe because that is the best way to let me know that you found this video helpful. If there are any further questions, please feel free to leave those in the comment section down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.